Good morning. Uh, Tim Alvin, thanks for coming. Um, it, just talking with Mike a little bit. Just um, if you want to um, hit me with some questions, fire away, and I'll, I'll do my best. If we want to get into it too deep, I think I'm, I think I'm ready for that. I got my phone and my notes here. If I need to, if I need to pull it, pull it up. Uh, I'll start running back. So that's that's your forte. Uh, how soon do you want to identify a top one or a top two? Maybe you've already done that, and, and how do you see that position? playing out through the course of the season. Yeah, I, you know, Coach, listen to Coach uh, answer the question there on the running backs. He's dead on. Um, I, I, we're repping all of them, basically even. Uh, I'm not in a, in a hurry to do it. I'm preparing for all of them to play. I, there's not any question in my mind. You'll see every one of those guys at some point in time uh, throughout the course of the season. Uh, as, you, as you'd ask uh, Jason about, about Walter uh, with, the, with the injury, it may be towards the end, but coach is dead on with the four games. We utilized that to, I thought, to perfection last year. Huge thing, huge for us. Kurt, from Kurt Daneker getting three games, to Hooks getting four, Buckner getting four, huge, huge thing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so uh, Shine, I think, I think played in three. Uh, we actually, you know, Shane went early. Shane Hooks went early, knowing we were going to get Buckner. You know, uh, got his fourth game in the bowl game, I think. And so I, I you know, and, and it's. It, Cause you a few more meetings, you know. If they're, you know, well, this situation, this situation, and you don't have a crystal ball. But, but uh, it's a great, great rule change by the uh, NCAA, and, and we, we're definitely using it. Uh, back to, uh, on the running backs position, as you, you know, Julian's got the most experience. Um, you know, I, I was going to, you know, how, how much offensively, how much we lost to graduation as far as you know yards and touchdowns. I didn't want to. I didn't. Want, I don't want to know the number. I know it's a lot with Poppy and the guy. You know, I didn't want to start balling up here. But uh, 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 I, I, to be honest with you, I, 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 I've been up. You know, I wake up in the middle of you know 3 a.m. or whatever, and I'm not thinking about that. I'm just you know, it's I'm on, I'm on to the next thing. And um, I like I like the group. Um, I, I think they're talented. There's going there's going to be a, something that's going to come up that we haven't seen it. That you know, some kind of new pressure or whatever or a you know, a, a turnover. You know, they're, they're, they're going to make a mistake here and there. They're young, um, but I, if I can, you know, pat the guys on defense on, on the back. I mean, last year they had they were going through some young stuff early, and um, you know, had had some growing up to do. And by the end of the year, they were there's no way playing better than those guys. And so I, I tell my guys, hey, you know, um, I use that example. Come down the stretch. We need that's what we need to be doing. Come down the stretch in November. That's how you know the games in November are how you remembered, <laughs> you know. And that's where we gotta make strides and try to get this thing finished off. But um, as a group, I'm I'm very excited. They're talented. O'Shawn had a really really good spring. Julian's really frustrated. I mean I can see it in his face um, because he's worked. He's I mean he's 205 pounds. He's the fastest guy on the team electronically, and he he wants to go. And I'm having to. The training staff has got you know the reins pulled back because he's he's wanting to go and but we just don't want to have a setback, and um, he's hungry. Um, you know the Purdue game two years ago his freshman year, you know Dorian was fine and AJ was fine and and he closed out the last two series in the second quarter, and he and he played the whole second half and I could have put it you know it wasn't because of anything other than he was just playing well. Um, so uh, again he's he's. Um, um, frustrated, but hungry, and be, be ready to go. So I know it's a long answer, but I'm, I'm really proud of the guys, and uh, we're not we're not uh, ready for a game just yet. But um, I'm I'm excited. Demontre Tuggle, I will mention him. He's he just got here in May, um, May 13th. Dax and his staff's done a great job, not only with the team but with Demontre. Um, uh, Time very very well. Low four fives, electronic. Uh, put on about I think 12 pounds. Got a, got a nice award from, from Dak. Uh, he's going to factor in. So it'll be interesting coming on the stretch. You got a similar situation kind of in the receiver room with trying to replace a lot. Um, you got Thanks. one established in Cam Odom. Um, what, what's, what's been your strategy with the receivers in terms of getting guys reps? Yeah, they're very much like the running back room, as you said. Um, they're talented but young. There's going to be a, a time or two that it's not going to go our way. But uh, uh, probably as a whole, with their, you know, taking consideration how young they are, it's really, really a good group. Exciting. Cam's got the most experience back. 
Um, Coach mentioned the team captain. He's worked really, really hard. We're very excited with where he's at. Uh, we got to get him targeted more than, than a year ago, but last year you got two seniors, and Andrew Meyer was a fifth-year senior, and Poppy's a fifth-year senior. So basically, you know, that's kind of where things went through. But Cam, it was over, I think, 30, or 30 catches or a little over 30 catches. Uh, had some really big games for us. Got to keep him healthy. He's worked hard to his upper body. Um, he's, um, again, great with leadership. And then you get into to a deal knock, you know, probably the most dominant special teams player in our league. Um, it, it plays 10 to 15 snaps. He's done a great job. Um, outside, uh, Isaiah Cox it was a guy that got, got reps last year. He's just going to be a sophomore. And then you get into the youth, the, the, young, the really young guys, uh, and Jerome Buckner, Columbus area, two gold, uh, two gold medals in the state track meet, very explosive. Uh, got four games in last year, as I mentioned. Uh, uh, Tyler Walton, uh, uh, redshirted, did not get four games uh, with, with Poppy and, and Jerome, uh, but has um, had a really, really good offseason. Looked really good in fall camp. He's actually wearing number four. And to be honest with you, other times I, I can't really, you know, I told somebody, I said, they're going to, in pregame, they're going to say, I thought the white kid graduated. There's, he's down there at number four because <laughs> he, look, he looks the same body type. And he's made some really, really, play, really good plays um, through, through fall camp. Um, uh, we're missing Shane Hooks right now. Uh, had the had the sports hernia type growing uh, surgery. Uh, he's he's here in camp and and um, doing what he can walkthroughs and meetings and and uh, starting to do some some uh, jogging straight ahead and running straight ahead with uh, with the training staff. We look forward to getting him back. It may be, you know, I'm not sure what game, uh, but we want to be sure and and, and uh, get him involved when he gets back and gets going. Uh, Tyler Tupa. Is coming off um, an injury um, in the spring, has had a re had a really good uh, um, spring and summer and fall camp, and, and got a little little bruise uh, a couple of days ago. You know, missed a couple of days, but he'll get back. We think he's going to be able to help us. Um, he's really really um, uh, bright, knows all the positions, good at high point in the ball. Probably our best 50-50 guy. You know, if you just start put a, put a gun to my head today. Um, so we're excited about him. But um, the, the, the guys that um, – I know I'm missing it. So let, me, let me just check, make sure I wrote down the receivers because I don't want to hurt anybody, anybody's feelings. Uh, K.J. Manders done a really good – had a, probably his best two days here, the last two days of practice. Isaiah. Okay, those – again, there's, we have others, uh, but those are the guys that, that uh, just out of the top of my head. Uh, um, repeating myself, just the experience, they're going to have to um, grow up and, and – um, and, and, and we can't we can't go crazy when something doesn't go our way with those guys, and just keep bringing them along like the guys on defense did last year. I think I just think. How do you like delegate how you're tracking how these guys are doing during camp? This is kind of curious. Yeah, that's that's a great question. Um, we we've got um, our, our graduate assistants, Coach Isferding, uh, a couple of our student uh, student helpers, student coaches, I should say, that undergrads do a great job. We we chart everything. Uh, we, you know, we coach Dixon grades and charts, drops, pass breakups, you know, anything. I mean, everything they do um, throughout the course of our practice. And, and uh, I think Coach uh, Scott just pulled up just yesterday uh, targets. You know, the sheet comes up, running backs, tight ends, receivers, and their jersey number, and the ball, you know, went to the, went to that receiver. And Percentage, you know, he's at 68% or 100% or whatever, how many times he's targeted, drops versus bad throws. And we and the receivers know it, we know it, um, and do the best that we can to supply them with the information because the guys that are going to make plays and do what we ask on the perimeter blocking-wise are going to get in the game. Uh, so it's um, you, you definitely can't, with your, when you're operating with that many receivers, you're not going to be able to just pull it up off, off your head. We, we chart it. If you had to pick your best blocking receiver, who would you say is? Well, they, they all better. I better right now. They'll, all those names I said better, better be in my in my mind. Um, but because um, it's so it's so vital on what you do, and you can't have any any running game, especially on the perimeter, without guys that, that are tough. And that's the first thing coach is going to ask before he sees any highlight film. You know, he's going to he's going to check off check the box on tough toughness. Uh, so that's just the standard here. It's, we don't, we're not taking somebody out because he's not going to do it. That, that's, not, that's not 
that's not the standard. We're not going to do that. Now, will I get will I get deal knock in there on some maybe something? It's kind of specialty play. You bet, because he's a you know a, he's a, what I consider a dominant guy. Uh, as I mentioned on the special teams, he's a dominant guy. There's a role for him. You know, he come he come Poppy would come out on short yardage, and he would come he would come in. Listen, we'd do some things with motion with him. That would be an example. But but uh, I mean, Darfnell, KJ, DL. Those guys are physical, tough, strong in the weight room, can match up on a nickel Sam, that a team that puts a nickel in and he's a base, you know, lighter body, or a team that just plays their nickel and he's a 210 guy. I think that we have some guys, some slots that are better at blocking a guy that's 210 as opposed to a 180 nickel type guy. So, you got a lot of things you want to get done in camp. <clears throat> What's one thing if you, if you had your list of seven, eight things? The one thing that you would like to get done before anything else at the conclusion of camp. If, if we do this one thing, we're, we're going to be able schematically or or just when, yeah. From a coach hit on it, developing some depth at some positions. You know, um, I, I think I think where we are right now in the O line, depth wise, we're probably as good as we have been since 2012. The, the Herman Eric Herman era, numbers wise, I think we're really really we pro probably better. At center and guard inside than we've ever been, and and we got we've got to continue the depth at tackle. You know the two seniors are have worked their tail off. Uh, couldn't be prouder of, of really the whole group. I mean the O line is has set the the standard. The temp the, the, and they have set the tone of the offense along with Nathan. The, the best summer we've had, and I thought I'd never ever have a better summer with a group of guys than last year's group. And it, I mean. You know, maybe it's rose-colored glasses, but these guys, the guys took it to another level. And I think the guys up front with Nathan and the running backs and receivers and tight ends have followed. Um, so I, the depth of tackle is, is the, we've got to continue to do that. And then, you know, schematically wise, you know, coach is after me about getting more throws and things like that. And, and, and um, you know, just more throws. Yeah, yeah, he's been on me. For, for you know, for actually you know, prior to this year, uh, you know, and, and I always you know the you know the first I don't know after that Northern Illinois game I'm not sure what game that was five or four it's five or six six, you know we break we stopped and did a little mid section a mid mid season thing where we were at and we were you know about 32 or 33 throws a game uh, through those first six you know because the score kind of dictated it, you know you look at those games Virginia UMass. You know, I can't, you know, uh, for the first one, uh, Howard, you know, I mean, we, I mean, that's what kind of what was needed to get done. And, um, you know, then coming down the stretch, I mean, I'll be honest with you, I mean, I could have threw it more, but we just, you know, it just that wasn't, it wasn't really working. And, and some of the scores were some of the scores. And so the numbers were kind of a little bit down. I, I just think moving forward, um, it, we're going to call the plays that needed as, as it, everybody's going to, but the, but the passing game, with Nathan, uh, he's really had his. This is his first off season because he first got here. You know, he wasn't. He had a little sore shoulder. Uh, am I right on that, Scott? You know, and and didn't get the full benefits of Dak. And then last year he had the surgery on the non-throwing sh shoulder. And then and then now he's you know he's been with Dak for a year, and it is. Uh, Coach Rudolph had said this the other day, and I want wholeheartedly to agree that that um, he's a different. He's he's a different guy. I mean, you, you get you get with Dak for a full year, you're a different dude, um, and, that, and that's a fact. It's when you can't when you can't take the full advantage of, of the, what what Dak's implementing down there. You know, you're at a disadvantage. And Nathan has is a different guy. The ball's out, getting out, I think, quicker. Uh, definitely, definitely, three ironish on throws. And that's what that's what Allen had said, you know, he watching this film, he's got a good arm, but I mean he's made some, you know, things with this with the ball that's just he's just it's different uh, because of his development. So um I th those are the couple things that I would say is an offense that we've got to you know you get more throws and back up yeah, that's the, I would say the top priority. And I yeah, I mean, the running backs and all those things, hey, I we I think we've done a good job recruiting and it, it, we'll find out at the end. But I, I, I feel good. Are you putting any like contingencies in the offense because you know that depth of tackle is a little light to try to get Nathan on the move? Like you always try to, we try to do some things that change the launch point so they can't zero in, you know, or it's getting out quick. 
you know, our thing is to, to, to keep the guys off balance is the quick game. We don't, we're not great extensive, but we have them. You sprinkle that in with the option. And then with moving him in the pocket, they can't zero in. You know, there's times that, that you know, and we, so we, and we got packages to help, you know, the tackles with tight ends and backs. I mean, like everybody does, in which we took, you know, we used, I thought, very, very well in the Northern game. They had the kit, the great rush end. You know, we had a tight end on him, and, and it helped. And, you know, we had a 21-9 to 9 lead in the fourth quarter and didn't close it out. Um, so, uh, yes, I, I think I answered that the best I could. Anything else? I didn't mention the tight ends, I, I, you know, but I want to – I mean, we, Connor was a fifth-year senior and, and really played behind – he played behind the two guys that I, in my mind are free agent type of tight ends with Manjin and, and Mason. Um, and then t Connor had, a, I thought, really had a good year. Uh, you know, the Lormans um, have have had a really good offseason. I think both of them were 250 or more in targets. I think we've got some really, really good, talented tight ends. I, I, I mean, they're going to be really good this year. In in, in a couple of years, you're going to have some really monster guys that can catch the ball um, without getting too deep in the depth chart. But but uh, we were just talking to staff wise yesterday or day before. We've got to get those guys targeted uh, and coach, you know, he's big on big guys and getting them in different spots. And we're, we're, we're starting to get some of that stuff implemented, but you're going to see, I think you're going to see, you know, some balls, you know, you not go to number four down there, you know, in other places we got to utilize them. We got to, we got to get them. Uh, I'd probably put that as third, you know, it's just as an offense. We got to get those guys involved. Um, in, in the offense, it will, it will, I think, cause problems when you, you mix in Buckner and the guys I mentioned and those tight ends and where they are. I think we got a nice little, I feel pretty good. We stay healthy.